Hey guys, and welcome back to the Chicago White Sox franchise. In this episode, we are going to play yet another month as we'll finish off the month of May, starting against Tampa Bay here. Thank you guys so much for the support on the last episode and the first episode as well. It's been amazing. Everyone that's liked and commented and just watched the video, I really appreciate every single one of you. Before we get into some gameplay in this episode, I want to go over uh, some... Uh, some of the standings and some of the young guys how they're doing so believe it or not we are in first place a game and a half up on the twins who have lost six in a row so that is kind of insane we're in first place uh some of the young guys are doing really good drew thorpe in seven starts in triple a right now he's got a 2-1-4 era in 46 and a third innings he is pitching great only giving up three home runs in those four starts as well uh, he's been good Jairo Iriarte, who's also had seven starts in AAA, he's pitching fantastic as well, 279. So a lot of uh, a lot of good things coming from our youngsters so far. And Noah Schultz, another starting pitcher, has 13. He hasn't had a game started, which I'm gonna fix. Uh, put him in the rotation. Didn't realize he wasn't in there, but 332 in 38 innings for him. And of course, our number one prospect in the organization, Colston Montgomery, has had himself a great first month in triple a he's hitting 333 with seven homers and 22 ribbies to start the season a 402 on base percentage and a 948 ops i think this guy's ready for the big leagues but i'm not going to call him up just yet we're going to wait we'll reevaluate see how he's doing at the end of the month and uh, then i want you guys to let me know in the comments do i just call him up now or do i continue to wait a little bit you know we'll see where we are standings wise and stuff you know what i mean I don't expect this first place to last too long, but you never know. This division really is weak, so you really never know. Even if we won the division, though, by some crazy miracle, you know, where are we going? Nowhere. Anyway, we're going up against Tampa Bay in this one, and Zach Eflin with a runner on first, one out. It's Luis Robert. It's a base hit up the middle. So we got first and second, one out here in the top of the first. We got a rally going. Andrew Vaughn up next. He's going to line one to right field, past the diving Yandy Diaz for a base hit. Runner's going to stop at third. We got bases loaded and one out here in the first for Yon Mankata. Mankata's just going to pop this one up, and this is going to be called infield fly roll. So a batter will be out. We still got the bases loaded, two out. Last chance here in the first is Gavin Sheets, who's having himself a nice start to the season. 1-1 one, one count on him, and he is going to hit the ball hard, but right at the first baseman, and Yandy Diaz will run over, step on the bag, and threat averted in the first for Zach Eflin as he gets out of this jam. Jake Woodford's on the mound for us. He's continuing to pitch great. Seven starts this season, 3-2 three, two, three and two, with a 1.75 ERA. Pitching phenomenal. Our pitching is real big reason why we're actually in first place right now. We're playing pretty good. But that is Randy Rosarina with the leadoff. A little bloop base hit over the glove of Ion Mankata at third out, out of his reach. That's a leadoff single for Tampa Bay. Next up, Harold Ramirez. Bat 321 to start the season. He rips on the left field. Going back is Benintendi. He puts his glove up, but he can't make the catch. And that one's going to one-hop off the wall. It was kind of an in-betweener, though, so Randy Rosarina only goes up to second. Ray's got first and second. Nobody out in the first. Yandy Diaz up next, and he's going to find the gap in the right field. That's a base hit. Rosarina rounds third. He scores easily, and Harold Ramirez goes into third. So it's one nothing Tampa Bay in the first, and they still got first and third. Nobody out. Brandon Lowe's the next batter. He lines one in the right field. Gavin Sheets is right there, but not the best arm for Gavin Sheets as he's going to get this one in, but it's going to be a sack fly for Brandon Lowe. 2 nothing Tampa Bay in the first inning. Still in the first, it's Richie Palacios. He grounds a short 6-4-3 double play to end the inning, but two runs in the first for Tampa Bay, and they take an early 2 nothing lead. We're going to jump ahead to the top of the third. It's Andrew Benintendi leading off, and he's going to find the gap in the right center field. This one headed towards the wall, and it's a leadoff double for Andrew Benintendi. He's off to a very nice start to this season as well, as he's doing great in that leadoff spot. Loya Mena is up next, and he's going to hit one in the center field. Benintendi's going to stay right there at second, so leadoff double, and Eloy Menez just lines one in the center. No advancement of the runner. Luis Robert up next. And he is going to line one to right field. This one is going to be caught, though. Nice shoestring grab from the right fielder. And two away in the top of the third as we have not got this runner over. Andrew Vaughn is up next with two outs. And he is going to hit one right to the second baseman, Brandon Lowe, who throws over to first. Inning over. So we get a leadoff double from Ben Intendi, but nothing to show for. We're jumping ahead all the way to the fifth. It's Randy Rosarina. Lines one in the left center field gap. And this one is gone. A two-run home run. 
for Randy Arozarena. And the Rays take a 4-0 lead here in the bottom of the fifth inning. It's his seventh of the season already. And that's a two-run shot. 4-0 in the fifth. Still in the fifth. Next batter, Harold Ramirez. And he is going to line one in the center field. That dunks in in front of Luis Robert. That's a base hit. So Jake Woodford not having his best start. He's had a great start to the season, but today he's got hit up for four runs. And it's actually going to be six runs as Yandy Diaz crushes one. And this will take Jace Woodford. Jake Woodford out of the game. Gives up a six spot in four and two thirds. A couple home runs killed him. Yandy Diaz with an absolute moonshot. His fifth home run of the season. And it's six nothing Tampa Bay as we got nothing really going this game. Jake Woodford didn't have his best stuff. And we go all the way into the ninth. It's actually 9 nothing. Ray's got a couple of runs in the quick sim. This should end it on a double play, but the shortstop throws the ball in the right field. And the run's actually going to come around to score. So we, we score a run on an error in the ninth inning. Make it 9-1, but uh, it's way too little, way too late. As Mike Moustakas is up next. Hits it to first. And uh, this will go back to first. Back to Yandy Diaz. He started it. And they'll end the double play as this one is over. So Tampa Bay beats us in game number one. Jake Woodford doesn't have his best stuff. And we get some bad news after the game. Luis Robert is hurt. He tore a ligament in his finger. And he will be out for one to two months. So Luis Robert is gone for a while. Brett Phillips is the guy we called up for the MLB. And we're going to jump ahead a little bit in the month as we're going up against the New York Yankees. Is we're now 25 and 22, so we're staying above 500. We're just kind of battling it out. If we can stay above that 500, long for, 500 line for as long as possible, we'll have a much better than anticipated season as we're going up against the Yanks in Yankee Stadium. Marcus Stroman so far off to a good start in his first year as a, as first year as a Yankee. And in the first, is two out, nobody on for Gavin Sheets. He's moved up to the three hole now that Luis Robert is out. And he's going to hit a two out base hit. In the first, hopefully we get some two-out action going. Andrew Vaughn is up next. And Andrew Vaughn's going to line one for a base hit. So we got first and second two-out here in the first inning. As we're looking to start a nice little two-out rally in the first, Joe Mankata is up next with two outs. And he is going to pop this one up. Left fielder runs on. I think that's Alex Verdugo. Should be, yep. And Verdugo makes the catch to end the first inning. So we get a little two-out rally. A couple hits in a row, but that would be it. Mike Sorker is on the mound for us. Nine starts, 2.85 ERA. He's pitching really, really well. Uh, like we said, our whole pitching rotation is actually pitching really well right now, besides Chris Flexen, really, but that's about it. Anyway, Glaber Torres leading off the game. Not sure why he's number 13 in this game. That needs to get fixed. Anyway, he's going for second for a double. Gavin Sheets kind of nonchalantly gets that in, but he still throws out Glaber. So nice outfield assist from Gavin Sheets. A couple batters later, it's Juan Soto, and Juan Soto rips one, and that ball's gone into the second deck. Juan Soto with a solo shot in the first, and it's one nothing Yankees early on as Juan Soto's first season as the Yankees seems to be going pretty well. Only his sixth home run of the season, but you know it's Juan Soto. He'll you know he'll be there at the end. Uh, top of the second is Mike Mustakis. He's going to find the gap. This one's deep in the right field. It is going to be off the top of the wall. And Mike Moustakis is barely going to get into second with a one-out double. So Moustakis just missed a home run, but it's a one-out double. Max Stassi up next. He is going to chop this one to short. Volpe is going to make the play two away. So again, we have a runner in scoring position. Let's see if we can finally get him home this time. It's Dominic Fletcher. Hits it pretty hard, but Volpe is right there. And again, we leave another man stranded in scoring position in this one. Top half of the third leading off is Andrew Benintendi. And he's going to draw a walk. So we get a leadoff guy on in the third inning for Aloy Jimenez. And Aloy needs to step up now that Luis Roberts out. And he's going to do exactly that. Crushes one to left center field. Aloy Jimenez goes way out of here into the back of the White Sox bullpen. And the White Sox take the lead after a two-run shot from Aloy Jimenez. As he has been fantastic so far. His eighth home run of the season already. And this one was absolutely crushed. We're going to see it on the show drone blasted out there to left center field way out of here that actually hits the very back wall of the of the uh, White Sox bullpen 441 feet missile from Aloy Jimenez going to the bottom of the fourth it's Juan Soto again he's gonna rip one up the middle for a base hit Dominic Fletcher keep that in front of leadoff single in the bottom of the fourth for Juan Soto next up Giancarlo Stanton 
and he is going to rip one into the gap. This one's headed all the way to the wall. Juan Soto around second. He's headed into third. Is he going to round third? He is going to round third. The relay is not nearly in time. Soto scores all the way from first, and the Yankees have tied the game at two. After a double from Stanton, uh, Mike Soroka would get out of the jam that followed as Stanton stays stranded at second. This game's still tied at two in the fifth. It's Andrew Benintendi. He finds a left center field gap. He's been hitting great, Benintendi. It's another double for him in this episode, and that's a one-out double for Andrew Benintendi. So again, we got a guy in scoring position here in the fifth as this game's tied. Aloy Jimenez homered his last time up, and Aloy Jimenez is going to rip one down the right field line just inside the line. It's a base hit. Aloy Jimenez rounds first thought about going for second. He's going to hold right there, though, but it's an RBI single for Aloy Jimenez, and he has all three RBIs for us so far. Three, three to two in the fifth. Gavin Sheets up next. That's a base hit up the middle. Louis Jimenez will go to second. First and second one out here in the fifth. We still got a rally going. Been hitting pretty well today. We just haven't got that big hit. But Andrew Vaughn's going to come through here with a base hit in the right field. Louis Jimenez is going to round third and score. Gavin Sheets goes first to third. And it's an RBI single from Andrew Vaughn. And it's 4-2 White Sox. And that was it. That would chase Marcus Stroman out of the game. Did, definitely didn't have his best stuff. Today is uh, he'll leave Aaron Boone will pull him and Marcus Stroman disappointed with himself not the greatest of starts It's Ron Marinaccio to try to get out of the jam and Yo Mankata hits this one deep in the left field Plenty deep enough to score the run as this will be a sack fly and the White Sox take a 5-2 lead in the top of the fifth Bottom of the fifth we go Yanks got a guy on one out for Glaber Torres and he's gonna poke one through the right side of the infield for a base hit so tying run now coming to the plate here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And that tying run would be Alex Verdugo. 2-1 count on him. And Alex Verdugo rips one in the gap. And this one is out of here. Home run, Alex Verdugo. Three-run, game-tying home run in the fifth inning. So just like that, after we took a 5-2 lead in the half inning before, Yanks come right back with a couple hits and a game-tying three-run shot from Alex Verdugo. That would be it for... Uh, Sororka, but a couple batters later, Joe Barlow would give up a two-run home run to Austin Wells. And just like that, the Yanks have a 7-5 lead to five-run inning for New York as a three-run shot from Verdugo and a two-run shot from Austin Wells gives the Yanks a 7-5 lead in the sixth inning, though. We're trying to come back. We got a leadoff guy on, and now Max Stassi with the base hit up the middle. We got first and second. Nobody out. Go ahead, run at the plates. Dominic Fletcher, he hits a base hit up the middle. Runner is going to think about scoring, but he's going to stop at third. So, yet again, we have bases loaded, no out here. This time in the sixth inning, Andrew Benintendi has been coming through all season. He's going to do it again. Ripped under the glove of a diving DJ LeMayu. Two run score. It's another double for Andrew Benintendi. Game tying two run double. In the top of the six, still nobody out. Eloy Jimenez is going to crush that hanging slider. Absolutely just sat on that pitch and blasted it to left. This is a three-run home run. That's his sixth RBI of the game. And a two-run shot, had an RBI single, and now a three-run shot. And that's his ninth home run of the season. Sixth ribby of the game, and this one was absolutely crushed. Terrible pitch right there on that hanging slider. And the White Sox... Take a 10-7 lead. Still 10-7 as we go into the top of the seventh. Had to show Aloy Jimenez coming through again. Base hit up the middle. Run, a runner comes around third, and he will score. Seven RBI day for Aloy Jimenez. He was fantastic, and uh, that would be the end of this one as Brevia would come in, get Stanton to ground out to third, and the White Sox pick up a win off a very, very amazing performance from Aloy Jimenez. Two homers, seven ribbies. And the White Sox win a very offensive game, 11-7. to So we're going to move on to the last game of this episode. And towards the end of the month here, as we're still floating above 500, three games above 500. The Orioles have a much better team. They're only four games above 500, so we're surviving. And look who's on the mound. Garrett Crochet, we're going to give him a start. And we'll, we'll try to build up his stamina, build up his innings, as he's been phenomenal out of the bullpen. 14 and a third. He's got a 0 0.63 ERA. So it's like, you know what? Chris Flexen isn't pitching well. We move Chris Flexen to the bullpen. Garrett Crochet to the rotation. We'll see how it works out. He gets Cedric Mullins to strike out his first batter, and he would end the first 
pretty cleanly with a 1-2-3 inning as Adley Rutschman flies to center and Brent Phillips is right there for the out. We're going up against the new Baltimore Orioles ace Corbin Burns and he is doing fantastic so far. 7-1 in 10 starts with a 2-1-5 ERA. So he's been worth that whole trade for the Orioles for sure. Bottom half of the second inning we go. Leading off is Yon Mankata. And Yon Mankata is going to rip one deep into right center field. Right fielder's going back. He looks up, but it's going to one hop over the wall for a ground rule double. Lead off double in this one. Paul DeYoung up next. He's had some clutch hits, but he really hasn't had a great season. He strikes out swinging right there. So Renan stays on second. One out for Mike Moustakis. And Moustakis rips one into right center field. No one's going to get to this one. This is going to one hop the wall. And it's an RBI double for Mike Moustakis. 1-0 Chicago in the bottom of the second. Next up, Brent Phillips, who's uh, getting some time here and there. Splitting time with Dominic Fletcher, really. And he's going to find a gap in the left center field. Back-to-back -back doubles. Third double of the inning against Corbin Burns. And our bottom of the lineup doing some damage as it's 2-0 Chicago in the bottom of the second. We would get that runner over to third. Andrew Benintendi would be up with two outs. And he comes through with a base hit. RBI base hit for Andrew Benintendi. It's 3-0 Chicago in the bottom of the second. Good stuff right there. We'll go to the top of the third, though. It's Jorge Mateo with one out. Nobody on, and he rips that slider. That one goes over the White Sox bullpen. Way out of here. Jorge Mateo showing some power, and the Orioles are on the board. It's 3-1 in the top of the third. Only a second home run of the season, but he got all of that one. That was crushed, 433 feet. Straight away left. Next up, Cedric Mullins. And Cedric Mullins blasts one to right field. This one's out of here. The Orioles go back to back. Nine hitter and the leadoff hitter go back to back. Jorge Mateo and Cedric Mullins crush them down the line. That's Cedric Mullins' eight home run of the season. And uh, Crochet, you know, he hasn't pitched a third inning all season. It's looking like it's getting to him. Adley Rutschman up with two out, and that's a base hit up the middle. So the Orioles still aren't done. Hitting Crochet here in the top of the third. But we're going to leave him in. You know, it's only two solo shots. Anthony Santander is up next. And that one is absolutely crushed yet again. The third home run of the inning. I think that might have been the furthest one. All the way back in one of the last rows. And Anthony Santander, second, <laughs> his 13th home run. How went 460 feet. My goodness. Anyway, the third home run of the third inning. And that was it for Garrett Crochet in this one. So... We're going we're gonna to try to turn him into a starter, but that was not a good third inning as he ran out of gas. We wouldn't have another highlight all the way to the eighth inning. Jordan Leisure is in, and Adley Rutschman hits one down the line. It's a two-run double, 7-3 Baltimore in this one in the top of the eighth. Two-run double for Adley Rutschman. They would get Rutschman over the third. It's Gunnar Henderson who hits a base hit in the left field. Be 8-3 Baltimore here in the top of the eighth, and they were not done pouring it on. Still in the eighth inning. It's Ryan O'Hearn up, and he's going to blast one. Opposite field home run. That just sneaks out of here. Two-run shot for Ryan O'Hearn. It's 10-3 Baltimore, and uh, this game got way out of hand once Jordan Leisure came in. Unfortunately, he hasn't been the greatest out of the bullpen. But anyway, the Orioles would still tack on a few more in the ninth during the quick sim. They would win this one 12-3, so... We won one game against the Yanks. We lost the other two in the game play. But we are going to sim ahead toward to the end of May and just see how that month ended for us. As we'll see that in a second. But the Orioles took it to us in that game. Crochet. We're going to make him a starter. But Stanima, it might be a problem. It's going to take a while to build up his innings. But this is the season to do it because he really has good potential. But anyway, we actually end the season on a little bit of a win streak. Uh, not the season, excuse me, the month. A little bit of a win streak, as you'll see. We go into June, just the first couple of games to finish that with Milwaukee series. I think we sweep them, so we ended up being 33 and 28. So we're five games over 500 after two months. Would not have thought that would be the case, as you see there. We swept Milwaukee, which is kind of crazy, and we're five games up over 500. I mean which is just crazy. We're still in first place after two full months of the season. Plus, we're a half a game up uh, against the Guardians, but the Royals and Twins, a game and a game and a half behind, too. So there's still plenty of time for it to go wrong. But I'm just absolutely shocked at how well we are playing with this just team we've strung together. It's kind of insane. Anyway, 
Let's go over. We told you, I told you I'd go over Colson Montgomery's stats. You see, he's growing big time. His stats are going up. He's a 73 overall now. He's definitely ready to play right now in the shortstop role. I just don't know if we want to mess with this team mojo <laughs> because somehow we are in first place. So I don't know if I'd uh, maybe just want to wait a little bit. But also, he would be a big boost to the team, too, if anything. I mean, young young guy with plenty of talent, one of the top prospects. He cooled down definitely in the next month of AAA, but he's still hitting 277, 10 homers, 28 RBI. So not nearly as good as his first month, obviously. But he's he's still ready for the show, I think. So I, I want you guys to let me know. What do you guys think? Should I call him up or just wait a little bit, as you see? The two spots he could play short. Well, he would definitely be our shortstop. But uh, Paul DeYoung, who's not even doing that good. If we wanted to keep him, we could always move him to second. Because Mike Moustakis really isn't doing anything either. They both have low 200 batting averages. Paul DeYoung, maybe I like a little bit better. Because he could play the field and he has had some clutch hits. Mike Moustakis could just play every once in a while. It's not a big deal. Neither of these guys are a big deal to get playing time. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. Should I call up Colston Montgomery in the next episode? Let me know if you guys think so. I will. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, don't forget to leave a like. I will see you in the next one. We'll play the month of June. And we'll almost add, after the month of June, we have the draft, which will be important in this franchise. And then we have the trade deadline, too, where it's like, do we sell anyone yet or do we just wait? We'll see. We got plenty of action coming up. So I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one.